Tularemia, F. Tularensis. Now, you've just got home from your hike, everything went fine, you didn't get mauled by a bear or anything. But when you look in the mirror, you notice a red spot on your skin and realize that you were bit by a tick. And unfortunately for you, this little guy was carrying the infamous F. Tularensis, one of the most infectious bacteria known to man. The symptoms of this bacteria will begin to appear a few days later. You will likely get a fever, chills, and a headache. You also might start to throw up a lot. All of these are signs that you're dealing with tularemia, the disease caused by the bacteria. As days pass and more of your blood gets infected, you begin to experience severe shortness of breath, chest pain, and a cough that just won't quit. On top of that, you feel a lot of pain in your abdomen as your spleen and liver start to get bigger. It's like they're knocking on your skin yelling, please let us out. Is it really starting to suck in here? The disease eventually takes its toll and you pass out from exhaustion and never wake up. Here's the thing, it's true that tularemia is deadly with a mortality rate of up to 60%. That's only if it's left untreated. If you just gotten medical help earlier, you could have been treated with antibiotics. But now, it's too late. B. Pseudomalii one morning, you're out in your garden enjoying the fresh breeze while planting roses. Unknown to you, there's a deadly bacteria called B. pseudomalii hiding in the soil, which begins infiltrating your system through the tiniest cuts on your skin. You might also breathe in the bacteria while smelling the flowers, or if, for whatever reason, you decide to taste the dirt. When the bacteria first enters your system, you might get a fever and a cough, or find it slightly difficult to breathe. These are signs that you're developing melioidosis, a disease that kills around 90,000 people worldwide every year. One of the scariest things about melioidosis is that it's able to mimic the symptoms of other diseases, which is why many doctors misdiagnose it. As the disease continues to get stronger, you begin to have severe headaches. You're gasping for air at that point. You're also experiencing abdominal pain and stomach problems. And then there are the painful skin lesions appearing as red bumps filled with pus that keep leaking out. Knowing all of this, you can't understand why melioidosis kills around half of its patients. And if you're unlucky and get severe symptoms right from the beginning, then you're most certainly screwed. So next time you're out in the garden, remember there's more than just worms in that soil, and you should really consider investing in some good gardening gloves. Anthrax, B. anthracis. After all this talk about how dangerous a bacterial infection can be, you might think, that's it, I'm never leaving my house and we'll just survive on pizza deliveries. But what if we told you that you're not even safe there? Allow us to explain. In late 2001, someone, we're not entirely sure who, maybe a crazy scientist, maybe not, decided to use anthrax, a serious disease caused by bacteria, called Bacillus anthracis as a weapon by sending letters. The plan was that whoever opened these letters would inhale the spores without knowing. The person behind this operation probably grew B. anthracis in a lab, but this bacteria could also be found in nature, like in contaminated soil. When inhaled, B. anthracis is essentially a death sentence. We're talking 85 to 90% fatality rate. If the person doesn't get the required treatment. Let's say you inhale the bacteria. You begin to feel feverish, like someone's using your skull as a pot to boil water. And despite being bedridden, your muscles are searing with pain, as if you just run a marathon. Every torturous breath now reminds you that you've been taking the ability to breathe for granted. You also begin dry heaving and coughing up blood as a result of your ever shriveling lungs. Now you have a week to get diagnosed and be put on the usual treatment, antibiotics and antitoxin therapy. But even then, it's a coin toss whether you'll be back on your feet or end up six feet under. Anthrax is indeed at its deadliest when inhaled, but it can also get into your system through wounds, contaminated meat, or even if you get injected with an infected needle. So never share your needles, kids. Leptospira. Every year, Leptospira infects 1 million people around the world and sends 60,000 of them to the big sleepover up in the sky, so it's a real global problem. Drinking sketchy water, playing in mud, or cuddling with a sick animal, these are three things we generally wouldn't recommend unless you really want to get infected with this bacteria. Once it's inside your system, there's a good chance you'll develop a severe infection known as Wiles disease. This disease can cause jaundice, which can give your eyes, skin, and even your urine an unusual yellow color. There's also a chance you get kidney failure, which could cause your feet to swell up, making it difficult for you to walk. On top of that, you 
you'd always be exhausted and nauseous, and your skin might even begin to itch. If you don't get treatment right away, your lungs might also start bleeding, forcing you to keep coughing blood. At this point, the mortality rate would be higher than 50%, but considering how terrible your entire body would be feeling, you'd probably be wishing it was 100%. Thankfully, if you respond well to antibiotics, the immune system will eventually clear the bacteria from your body, and of course, by the bladder. Never forget to thank your bladder, but if not, well, you'll be ghosting us, literally. CRPA Let's say you're diagnosed with a serious bacterial infection. The doctor reassures you that everything will be okay. After all, they're prescribing you carbapenems, one of the strongest antibiotics ever made. But no one knew there was another bacteria hiding in your body, P. aeruginosa, which usually infects hospitalized patients. Worst of all, this particular strain is resistant to carbapenem antibiotics. As the days pass, you find yourself coughing up thick, green or yellow mucus, each breath more labored than the last. The pain in your chest is unbearable, like a vice tightening around your lungs. But here's the scary part. This bacteria has a trick called horizontal gene transfer, meaning it shares its antibiotic resistance with the other bacteria in your body, making them almost impossible to kill. You can almost imagine the bacteria passing cheat codes to each other, becoming stronger with every passing hour. On top of that, CRPA already has a mortality rate that makes the Grim Reaper nod in approval, ranging between 30 to 70%. And if you're particularly unlucky, you might even suffer from septic shock, which means means you could die because of how low your blood pressure is. Now, the doctor will try to give you other antibiotics that the disease might be sensitive to, especially newer ones. The thing is, CRPA might develop resistance to those as well. And not to forget, the other bacteria have resistance too. So at that point, all you can really do is close your eyes and cross your fingers. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, our Rickettsii. While most infections make you feel terrible, our Rickettsii here turns you into a walking, talking piece of modern art, as it could cover you from head to toe with pink spots. Let's start by pointing out that our has a fatality rate of 25%, which is quite high. This means if 10 people get infected with it, two and a half of them would die. Yup, that's how statistics work. This bacteria can enter your bloodstream through tick bites. From there, the white blood cells will begin to attack the bacteria, and you'll start to experience the usual symptoms. The area around the bite will start getting redder, hotter, and pulsating with pain. Your body's temperature will rise quickly as if you're lying on the sand in the desert, and you'll have a nagging headache, as if someone has been screaming into your ears all day. But the unique sign of this bacteria is a rash that could spread across your entire higher body. Okay, so at first, the rash won't seem that bad. It'll appear as light pink spots on your hands and feet. The spots aren't even itchy, which is why you probably wouldn't care enough to treat them and think that they're gonna disappear on their own. But you couldn't be more wrong. Over the next few days, you observe that the spots aren't going away. It continues to spread and eventually covers your entire body. The spots might also turn dark red and start to raise on your skin slightly. And everything is scarier once it turns 3D. Lucky for you, things change if you start taking doxycycline, which targets the bacteria directly, causing the symptoms to go away. Slowly but surely, the spots begin to vanish, and before you know it, you'll forget they were ever there. Crab. With a mortality rate that's up to 80%, crab is a bacteria that almost never misses an opportunity, always preying on people with weak immune systems. Crab can slip into your body through an invasive medical device that wasn't sterilized properly. Maybe it's a ventilator, maybe a catheter. Let's say ventilator because we really don't want to imagine what the latter option would look like. Once crab is inside your body, it causes infections in your blood, lungs, wounds, and urinary tract which means every time you go to the bathroom, you'd feel like you're pushing out lava instead of water. You start getting chills everywhere, and you can't stop shaking and shivering. You feel everything under your skin becoming increasingly cold, as if your body is turned into a refrigerator for your organs. Yet, at the same time, you have a fever, which causes your skin to be extremely hot to the touch. Now, this disease has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. For example, it's resistant to nearly all antibiotics. Even the heavy hitters, like the broad-spectrum carbapenem drugs, 
don't stand a chance against it. This is because the disease has genes that produce enzymes that destroy these antibiotics. Over the next few weeks, you get severe sepsis, organ failure, and eventually, you die. Oh boy, you've died a lot of times watching this video. But the bacteria doesn't die with you. Instead, it stays alive inside your body and clings to surrounding surfaces, waiting to infect its next victim. Talk about till death do us part. Streptococcus pneumoniae. Meet Streptococcus pneumoniae, or as we'll call it, Strepto. We really need to stop giving these deadly diseases cute names. Strepto is actually a terrible bacteria that literally feeds on children. Every year, it claims the lives of more than 300,000 kids under 5 years old worldwide. You see, Strepto is a master of disguise, morphing into over 100 serotypes, which means it can change into 100 different variations. This makes it very difficult for your immune system to recognize and fight it. But Strepto wasn't always this strong. For a long time, we had a secret weapon to defeat it in a heartbeat, penicillin. However, Strepto was smarter than we expected. It saw its fellow bacteria fall to penicillin and decided, nope, that's not gonna happen to me. So it evolved, changing its structure and became resistant to penicillin. Now, free from the threat of penicillin, Strepto turns every breath into a battle. Your joints now move with the fluidity of your arthritic grandpa, and light has suddenly become an enemy to your eyes, as if you were a bat meant to spend your life in a pitch black cave. Fortunately, scientists have developed vaccines that protect against the most common forms of this sneaky bacteria, reducing the number of infections. So, Strepto shifted its attention to children in underdeveloped countries, since there isn't much healthcare at all making them easy targets. S. aureus. Considering that one in three people have this deadly bacteria, there's actually a good chance it's already crawling on your skin or clinging inside your nose right now. Now at first, you might not get sick at all. But the longer the bacteria stays in your body, the more dangerous it becomes. So let's say you've had it for a while, like over a year, that's when you're likely to get sick. In most cases, S. aureus appears as a skin infection, like a boil or abscess. The area around the infection turns red and swells up. Think of it like a volcano, but instead of magma, it's filled with a disgusting liquid that keeps leaking out. When untouched, the infection hurts quite a bit. But if you do touch it, then you'll have just opened the seven gates of hell. You'll also have low blood pressure, making you feel dizzy and ready to pass out at any moment. This would seem like a relief as you'll barely be able to breathe and will be suffering from an intense headache. At that point, the mortality rate would be anywhere between 15 to 60%. In 2017 alone, S. aureus killed almost 20,000 people in the US. So at least you'll be able to make a lot of friends who went through the same thing when you get to the other side. Tuberculosis. When you're a bacteria that's inside a quarter of the world's population and you kill over a million people every year, you must have a secret. Well, tuberculosis secret is that it's airborne, which means swarms of it can fill your lungs when you simply take a breath of what you thought was fresh air. Tuberculosis gets transmitted from one person to another. So if a person has it in their system and they speak, cough, or even laugh, they will release tiny droplets of the bacteria into the air, ready to be inhaled by you. So next time you tell a joke and everyone bursts into laughter, Remember that one of them probably has an infectious laugh in more ways than one. Once you're exposed to the bacteria, there's a good chance you'll develop latent tuberculosis, which means the bacteria would be harmlessly hanging out inside your lungs. Basically, if you texted it, sup, it'll reply with, none, just chillin'. But this changes when you get sick with another disease, like a cold, or if you've been getting too freaky, HIV. Tuberculosis notices that your immune system is distracted and decides it's time to join the party. You begin coughing blood and red mucus while feeling severe chest pain, like there's an anchor pulling down on your lungs. Just staying awake becomes a chore and food begins to repulse you, causing you to shed weight like a snowman melting in the sun. At this point, you need to be put on antibiotics immediately for anywhere between four to nine months. However, if you were too far gone, then you'll die with literal holes in your lungs, at which point you have no one but yourself to blame for being so darn funny and making your friends laugh so hard.